So uh, this is one of my favorite runs on the site um, because mostly because it just encapsulates everything that I like about Taz. Is there's some crazy luck manipulation. Uh, the goal of the run is to collect all the souls from enemies, and none of the souls are guaranteed drops. They're actually, a lot of them are really small chance of dropping. Um, there's also other luck manipulation in the run. You have to uh, get you get a few items out of enemies. You know, on top of that, there's a bunch of great movement tech and uh, resource management and planning. It's just a really great altogether run. So with that out of the way, uh, let's get this run started. Five, four, three, two, one, and we'll go. Okay, so uh, first off, explaining how the RNG works. The RNG in this game only advances when certain actions happen. This includes enemy attacks, certain particle effects, and also the player attacking will advance the RNG. So you see this player attacking multiple times in this room. It's, it makes it look like there's a board player, player playing, but also it's he's changing his luck with every single attack. And with how rare the zombie soul is, I fully believe that it took this many attacks to get a good zombie drop. Um, he also, in the first room, picked up the base lard, which, when equipped, doubles his attack power. So what he's going to do here, he's going to go into the save room and activate that save point, which will allow him to quick save from the menu later. Um, so this backdash uh, movement technique, uh, it's uh, basically a backdash followed by a jump, then you attack and hold right. And the reason for the attack is it's to keep you facing left so you don't have to turn back around when you land to, to backdash again. For the Skrikin Skull fights, uh, his goal is to kill him and to collect the soul on the very, on the very same frame. Uh, when you get a level up in this game, the, the level up screen uh, interacts with the soul screen and basically cuts it off. And the level up screen is a lot shorter than soul screen. Plus, doing two things at the same time is always quicker. Um, the Creaking Skull soul is a giant arm that comes out of the person there. It's got a really long reach and it's also very damaging for this part of the run because you really aren't supposed to have it until much later in the game. So what he's going to do next is he's going to set up a, set up a glitch here. Um, so what he's going to do is he's going to make it, he's going to die basically, take damage and die, but he's going to interrupt the death with a soul collection and then pause and quit. And what happens is he's now here with zero HP and the game just doesn't update the camera when he goes out of the screen. Then he heals and he's back in at the other side of the map. Um, so now he's going to Arena. Arena is supposed to be usually in a casual run, like the fifth or sixth place that you visit. So right now he's incredibly underleveled and under-equipped for this part of the game. What he's, uh, what we're going for though is the goal of this is to try to get the giant bat soul as soon as possible. The giant bat soul allows you to fly, um, you know, which basically allows you to go anywhere in the castle. Um, it'll also allow the player to go through walls. Um, you can actually go through walls with any of the summon of the summon characters, but Giant Bat is the easiest to do it with. So he, in this room, he is trying to manipulate both the Lubricant's soul and also his item drop, which is the Muramasa. Muramasa is a really strong weapon and it also attacks really quick. The Lubicant Soul um, will give you more damage as your HP goes up. So at one HP, it becomes incredibly strong. Right. And here we have the Balor boss fights. Um, it might be possible to get a couple of donations in at this point. I'll start talking again at the top of the elevator.
Right, so this next soul that he's going to collect here is the Killer Mantle Soul, which is going to be the one of the main souls he uses for the run. What it does is it switches the HP and MP of enemies. There are a lot of enemies in the game that uh, have a really high HP but a really low MP, so the Killer Mantle can be used to just cut their cut their HP by a lot. Um, also, there are some enemies that have zero HP, so or zero MP, sorry. So the Killer Mantle will just kill them immediately when you use it. Like this uh, Iron Golem coming up here, who usually has 9,999 HP, but you can hit him with a Killer Mantle once and he's done. Also uh, collected the Hippogriff Soul there, um, which will allow him to go up. So here he gets uh, the Climb Solias, I think it's called. Um, it's it's basically the strongest uh, sword in the game, and he's going to be using that to get like a really high attack power for the rest of this. All right here, he gets Kicker Skeleton, which will allow him to down A, um, and that's going to be used for a much faster movement tech later. Um, he needs to go get the double jump before he can do that, so that's what he's going to do next here. Um, so, with the giant bat and everything, the rooms aren't actually connected the way that they seem to be. So if you leave the room where you aren't supposed to, very often you'll find yourself ending up in weird places all over the castle. So, the Ketobopas soul um, is a, a cloud that uh, you shoot out of your hand. Um, what it does, what it's used for in the run is uh, it can be used to basically cancel animations so you can do them again really quickly. Um, and here he uh, gets spoiled milk from the evil butcher. That is to drop his HP to one again. And here we have another boss fight and there he goes. All right. So next, uh, next he's going to glitch into the chaotic realm, which you aren't even supposed to be able to get to at this point. This is the last area that a normal playthrough visits in the game. With this final armor, what he's trying to do is get the sword drop from him, the final sword. It's just about as strong as the Clams Elias, but it doesn't have an elemental affinity for it. So, on um, certain enemies that are strong against elemental affinities, it can be used to get a higher attack. Right, and here... He gets Blocking Mill. And, uh, what Blocking Mill does is it has a low chance of just completely negating any damage. So you'll see very often the word guard pop up, and that means that he is luck manipulating damage so that it doesn't happen. Now we're going to enter Julius's boss fight from the wrong direction, and there we go. Okay. So now we're heading to... Now we're heading to death, and it's it's also like a really cool boss fight. All the all the stuff is great. Um, I believe, uh, if possible, we can have uh, more donations at this point. Okay, so here he collects a black belt from the werewolf, and that is just increases his strength a little bit more. And now, he's going to do some underwater stuff. K 
can't do the uh, can't do the down A attack underwater. So he he's instead going to use the Ketobopas soul to uh, backdash and cancel over and over again, like that. Right, heading into the Legion boss fight. Um, in order to collect Legion's soul, you have to destroy all the shells on him before you destroy the center center person. So, Clint Elias here has a really a really nice reach and does a huge amount of damage. He also manipulated out a faster death animation from Legion. So this upcoming soul. Uh, Gallimoth is going to be used for a kind of a fetch quest in the game. That soul is needed to get Chronomage, which is up in the inner quarters, like on the opposite side of the map. Which, And the Chronomage soul is needed to get Skyfish, which is in the underground reservoir, which is where we are right now. Okay, for the for the Mandragora soul, um, he has to wait for the plant to be pulled out before he can uh, actually get the skull to dro soul to drop. He gets a slime in the meantime, um, and uh, and if it's uh, working just fine, uh, we can do donations now. Um, I'll I'll have a small interruption after the headhunter fight, and then I'll be talking again at during Big Gollum. Sounds good. got a one dollar donation from Ray's first headset. Uh, it says, Ray forgot to charge me this morning, so I decided to go battery low about ten times during pre-show. Lesson learned? Probably not. We'll find out later. Good thing he has spares, right? So here's the headhunter boss fight. It has three phases. Um, and also we get some head bending action in the in the between. You have to have fun with the game, you know. Okay. Of course. <laughs> so this uh, this upcoming soul that he's going to pick up here is what you need Gallimoth for, Chronomage. If he didn't have Gallimoth on him, uh, the the Chronomage would have just disappeared before he could attack him. Right, uh, if, if you have any more donations, go ahead. Not yet, actually. There's a couple of them cooking, but they haven't made it all the way through yet. Ah. Okay. That's fine. So yeah, Dance Hall is uh, supposed to be actually one of the earlier areas, so he's just kind of zooming through here, uh, cleaning up and collecting souls. Um, and here you have another enemy that just dies in one hit to the Killer Mantle. And Big Gollum is also a regular enemy that's pretended to be a boss fight, so he has to manipulate that soul. Uh, Sushinoko here is, in my opinion, one of the most annoying souls of the game to get. Uh, first off, there is a chance when you enter his room that he's just not going to be here at all. At, if he is there, there's a chance that he's going to go away before you can actually get to him to kill him and get the soul. And even if you do kill him, there's a chance that he just won't drop it. So, uh, during the grand boss fight, he's again using the Ketobopas soul to interrupt his sword animation. So he can like swing multiple, multiple times a lot faster. 
He needs three specific souls in order to uh, continue the fight. Otherwise, the fight would have ended there. So he quips them to deliver the killing blow and then switches back to his uh, stronger souls to take on the second phase. Right. So after this, we're going to have one final soul cleanup before uh, heading off to the Chaos Realm. And that was the final guard that uh, he used earlier to drop the final sword. So here is the soul that you need Chrono Mage to collect. And now he's in the Chaos Realm and just a few more souls to go. And now he picks up the Chaos Ring. The Chaos Ring is not available unless you've already collected every single soul. Uh, what it does is it sets your MP regen to basically infinite. So, like, you just, you don't lose MP no matter how, uh, how much you use it. Um, in this fight, uh, the souls have been stolen from him, so he can't use them until he breaks those statues. Um... You see him using the red Minotaur soul uh, in the cutscene. There is a one-frame window where he can uh, where he can send that out. Um, red Minotaur is like the most damaging soul in the game, but it's also incredibly expensive. So for without the Chaos Ring, it would just be impractical. And uh, and that is the run. Uh, thank you for watching, and uh, I'm glad to support Nami. Um, I do believe mental health is a uh, incredibly important. Uh, when I had my own troubles, um, the only thing that let me through them is that is getting help for myself. So I encourage you, your mental health is just as important as your physical health and should be taken care of the same way. Thank you.